name's Alex Lee. Um, I started competing in uh, 2005. Um, competed in the 69 kilo class for most of my career. Uh, I started out as a 62. Started weightlifting, uh, playing football, American football, uh, in high school. So I started kind of a little late, mm -hmm. 16 years old. Um, my best training lifts are 145 kilos and 185 kilos in the clean and jerk. Um, best competition lifts are 140 in the snatch and 177. I won the World University Championships 2010, uh, Pan Am Games, so just the Olympics. So basically the way I can qualify is through uh, Continental Championships. So um, the, the top three spots are pretty much set in stone mm -hmm. um, through top eights. And then Wes, of course, he's going to get that uh, Continental spot. Um, so it's basically between Kane Wilkes and I yeah. um, to get that continental. So I'm signed up for the, uh, it's a silver level meet uh, in Colombia. Mm -hmm. I believe it's called Columbia Open in Ap April or March, March. mid-March. And then following that, we got the Pan Am Championships in April. Initially right. since 2011. Yeah. yeah. 2007, I moved to the United States. I've been out of weightlifting for three and a half years. Yeah. Then I moved to Phoenix to train Alex. And after like one or two months, uh, I went to Mexico to coach Mexican team for 2012 Olympic Games. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my father uh, used to lift, and he is uh, Asian Championship. Uh, he started coaching. Uh, actually, I was familiar with weightlifting. So since when I was grew up in uh, weightlifting family, which my dad took me everywhere that he was going for competition. Mm -hmm. So I started officially since 14 years old, 1990. And two years later, uh, I got selected for a junior national team. Mm -hmm. But I started competing uh, for international competition since 1994. Mm -hmm. I got... Um, Asian Junior Championship, uh, bronze medal at uh, Junior World Championship, Asian Games, a uh, few time Asian Championship, uh, World Championship. I broke uh, three time Asian record. Unoff unofficially, I broke world record three times mm -hmm. and I broke national records uh, since I was 52 kilo since I, w I got 85, eight, 83 and 85 kilo. Mm -hmm. Back at that time they changed the weight classes. So I broke, I think, like 67 time Iranian record mm -hmm. in different category. And yeah, that's it. I've been two time Olympian and 2007 finally I moved to the United States. Obviously, my greatest uh, in my career 99. was 1999. <laughs> yeah, yeah, world. But Asian Games, the a year before that, I I was so ready. I uh, tried world record two time in a snatch. Uh, I could go to world championship at 1998, but because of 
uh, World Championship was so close to Asian Games, mm. and Asian Games for sure it's more important for Asian countries. So we sh we had to decide one of those competition. So most of us uh, decide to go to World, uh, Asian Games. Mm -hmm. So I I that time I started 170. I went for 178 and a half world record. I missed it twice behind my back, and I did 210. Mm -hmm. But 1999 was my. Uh, I got first at uh, Asian Championship. Another time I tried world record in a snatch and kill and jerk. And I got world championship mm -hmm. in 1999. He was my hero too. Mm. For sure, first uh, Yuri Wartanian, mm -hmm. that I loved his uh, lifting. He was one of the greatest in the world. But after him, in our time, Puro Stimos was my hero. And I, I was thinking since I was like 18 years old, when I can compete with them, you know, with him, with Mark Husser. Andrei Kofali from Poland, and I don't remember, uh, Georgi Gardia from Bulgaria. Yeah. So, uh, but for World Championship, uh, especially for that World Championship, I was ready, but I got uh, injured like two months before competition. And it, I wasn't sure I can compete or not, but uh, last uh, past month of uh, World Championship, I started training again, and <coughs> I was ready for competing in World Championship, and I was happy. Mm -hmm. But getting close to competition, I was ready to get the gold medal. I was so motivated for this, you know. But uh, <clears throat> in that point, I remember uh, after that injury, I was getting ready for competition. Uh, like 15 days before competition, I felt really good. Mm -hmm. So I was ready for that. And actually, I didn't want to coach. I didn't want to go close to weightlifting. I was so tired. Mm -hmm. Like 16 years training hard and some problem with Iranian Federation. You know, I was so upset and I was so tired. So I came to United States. Uh, my family and my friends was asking me, just go work out, find out weightlifting club and go start work out again. I said, no. I even don't want to hear that <laughs> sound. But three years later, uh, you might know him, Jimmy Schmidt, mm -hmm. yeah. emailed me and he said, uh, we are coming to Phoenix, Arizona. There is a meet right there. So uh, I would like to see you right there. And I went there to meet him. Actually, there is American Open, right? Mm -hmm. Was I met Alex. And that competition made me feel yeah, like I want to do this, mm -hmm. do this again. But after my finish my career and then, you know, not doing weightlifting, I was thinking a lot about weightlifting, about what I did. I started writing about my experience, you know. I was uh, kind of uh, searching about knowledge, about weightlifting, about reading about a sport, you know. So after I came to the Phoenix and start to work with Alex, I felt again like, yeah, I want to do this. But I didn't know it's, it's going to be too hard, coaching. Actually, when I was lifting, I was saying, Co coach doesn't do anything. <laughs> like, Weightlifting is 
uh, harder than coaching. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but when I came to weightlifting uh, as a coach, and I felt no, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's hard. So I uh, start talk to my uh, old friend about coaching and stuff. My dad, my old coach, and yeah, I start to learn about how to coach, you know. And I kind of experience with Alex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I can say I'm better at coaching after like being in this business like eight years, eight years nine years. years. Yeah, actually, uh, when I started with Alex, I find out more important uh, thing for me as a coach is how they, uh, how much they passion about weightlifting. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. if they love it, and I love to help them. So I find out he's really love love weightlifting, and yeah, I can help him to achieve his goals, you know. And then after like one year, I remember training was so hard. We've been training in Mexico. And after one year, he just want to <laughs> <laughs> stay away from weightlifting. Yeah. And I called him, come on, come back. I'm, I'm not going to hurt you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so he kind of hate me that moment. Yeah. But I said, I had to do this because you have to find out what is weightlifting. Mm -hmm. So, but fortunately after that, uh, he had more experience and he knew what he wants. We push it and then I think 2015 was his best competition. So he has started to come up but unfortunately for 2016 Olympic Games mm -hmm. uh, he didn't have chance to go the way they select their team was little bit so uh, he did good I've, I, I feel we together did lots of achievement in weightlifting you mm -hmm. know personally I feel he was my best athlete of course I have uh, good athlete right now, talented athlete like Kaiser, like mm -hmm. Kaiser Witt, like Trevor, like Max, or Gretchen Villa. Mm. But uh, he was my best athlete ever, mm. and I feel like we did our relationship was like not only like coach and athlete, you know, we kind of like brother. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously I'm very grateful um, that I was able to meet someone like Shaheen and someone of his caliber. Um, yeah, I was just so excited at the time because, you know, I was just lifting with, you know, guys who really don't know much about the sport, didn't have that much experience. And at that time, I was just looking for that, that next step, you know. And so when I met Shaheen, you know, I got super excited and he was talking about, let's go to Mexico and all that, that's where it all started in Mexico. But, um, but yeah, like he was saying, it was, it was our relationship is a little different. It's not really, it, yeah, he's my coach, but he's like my brother, you know, so we have that kind of um, closeness in a relationship that most coach coaches and athletes don't have. So I think it's a little unique, you know, but definitely yeah, I learned a lot from this man. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, I, th I think it begins with skill first and um, developing just sound movement mm -hmm. and just understanding the fundamentals, how your body works, you know, that's important. Once you have that, then everything comes very easily. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem I had. I didn't develop that early in my career, you know, until I started working with Shaheen. So it was just a little delayed process, but um, yeah, you, you need to develop that first before you can start, you know, really putting in, you know, high intensity training. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think same. And in addition, I want to say like uh, how they love weightlifting, how they are motivated to do this. 
that's that's gonna help a lot because yeah. weightlifting is not like other sport it's too hard but if you find out uh, about technique and skills like Alex said it's gonna be so easy you have to love this uh, sport and after that everything will be and finding right coach you know coach is so important to show you the way to go to this um, you know have a good career mm -hmm. because if you if you're good we, we lost too many uh, like talented athletes because they don't know how to do this you mm -hmm. know in all their sports I mean but fortunately r right now in United States we have good coach that they can you know find talented athlete and then help them to it's changed a lot yeah, yeah. like uh, 2000 to 2010 I, I mean like from 19 uh, late 70s to mm -hmm. 2010 the country were like a strong in weightlifting was Russia, Bulgaria mm -hmm. for sure. Greece had a good team, Turkey, China, you know. It's kind of changed by the uh, rules that they put in the weightlifting and some kind of uh, political yeah. stuff, you know. Yeah. Of course, right now, we don't have a strong team from Bulgaria or Russia, but other country, uh, get better little bit like Colombia like you know South America it's getting better some of uh, Asian country like Thailand was mm -hmm. good until uh, they get banned because of that Egypt was getting better but they get banned like you know some other country coming up yeah. by um, unfortunately the country they had good athletes in weightlifting, they then they don't have any athletes right now. Like mm -hmm. Azerbaijan, like Bulgaria, Russia, you know, Russia always have good athletes. Mm -hmm. But you know, uh, right now, I think lots of things change. But uh, still, weightlifting. <coughs> if you look at the records, if you look at the uh, results, it's getting better. Yeah, I think the training Hopefully. systems have evolved, mm -hmm. you know, especially as the sport's becoming cleaner too, um, people are having to train differently. So in that sense, it's changed a lot too. Mm, no. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. I think it'll be more even, but it just depends on, honestly, just with who you know, honestly, it just go, comes down to doping and who's who's able to take and who's not. Yeah. You know, so yeah, um, yeah the ones that are not, the training system is different. Yeah, and it has to be different. Yeah, so. yeah, things changed right now since five six years ago. Mm -hmm. I think they're trying to make it cleaner. You know, some other country don't like. Yeah, that they they going down other country that they train like United States they right. train cleaner they coming up yeah, yeah. is definitely Elisha. you know one of the best yeah. definitely probably the best lifter right now we yeah. have yeah you know I, I've never seen someone snatch 220 like that. <laughs> yeah or ever no one's ever snatched 220 but him so yeah yeah he's definitely you know pushing the envelope uh, New age female. Yeah, I, I like that girl from uh, the Chinese Taipei. Her movement yeah. is good. Yeah. Is, it, is that Quo? Yes. Yeah, so Chen. Yeah, Quo Sun Chen. Lu Jiajun. Yeah, Lu Jiajun. He is old now. <laughs> yeah, he. So yeah. I don't know how old you were saying. He's still lifting though. It's incredible. Yeah, he's still at the top. He's, he's I mean, it's incredible. Best. Yeah. Yeah, I think I he's got a really just good textbook technique. Yeah. You know, he's a good model to to follow. I have yeah. lots of his videos. Yeah. 
If someone asks me, I keep sending them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's a snatch kid in Nigeria. They're all good, but yeah. yeah. I think he's good, but she's young is more just a powerhouse. Yeah. You know, like, I wouldn't live like that. You know, and the way he lives and he, how he's saying, you know, he only does powers. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't do that personally, mm -hmm. but. Yeah. Okay. But he's just a freak. Like, that's not the type of guy I would mimic, you know? Yeah. Like, like CJ Cummings, he's a freak, but yeah. I wouldn't have my athletes try to live like him. Yeah. You know? I mean, Last quad, you know, is when he came on the scene and mm -hmm. we were competing together. And I mean, I knew last quad he wouldn't be ready yet. Mm -hmm. like, I know he, he was still young and I didn't think he was going to pass. Although he did beat me once uh, last quad, but I knew after after that quad, he was he was going to do some crazy things. We just moved locations. Um, we're in the middle of doing that actually right now. Um, yeah, it's a better location. We're by the university. Um, trying to pull in a lot more students and, and younger athletes. Yeah. So um, for me, you know, I just want to finish this quad out and, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully make the Olympics. But either way, if I do or I don't, um, I think it's time to just continue with my, uh, my gym business and start building our team with Shaheen. Yeah. Um,